Hi friends, I hope you are having a fabulous weekend. Happy Sunday fun day. Well, actually, I'm sorry. By the time this goes up, the weekend will be over. It will be Monday, but I hope you had a fabulous one. And I hope that your Sunday fun day was amazing. Hope you had a fabulous, blessed weekend all together. So happy new week and let's make it a good one. If you are new here on the channel, I'm so glad that something brought you to this video and I hope you decide to stick around. If you're returning, thank you so much for your continued support. I am still so happy that you're here. You guys, uh, when this video goes up, you'll have a few days left to get your entry to my 1000 subscriber giveaway. It's massive with a ton of amazing makeup and skincare products and it retails over a thousand dollars. If you wanna get your entry, of course you have to be subscribed here on the channel and then just leave a comment on the giveaway video and I will have it linked in the description box below. So if it's your first time here and you're new, you won't have to go searching for it. You can just check the description box, click on the link, check out all of the goodies in the video. My dryer just went off. Check out all of the goodies in the video and then leave a comment on the video so that the comment picker will find your comment so you can win. Then keep your eye out on um, the end of the second week. So the end of this week, keep your eye out on my community tab for the winner post. For today, Today's video you guys I live in Michigan where we had like a couple random nice days and then it went back to gray and cold and where I'm at today in Michigan it's giving me all of the spring feels the sun is out the sky is blue it's probably like maybe 60 or 62 wow I'm a poet and I didn't know it. I just rhymed all that but it wasn't intentional um so anyhow, it probably, it feels like 70, 72 to me because I'm in Michigan when you go from like cold to warm or it warms up just a little bit, then it, it feels warmer than it is because, you know, whatever. It's just a Michigander thing, I guess. But uh, with the sunshine and the warm weather, it's giving me all the spring vibes. And then on my porch was my BoxyCharm flash sale order. So now that Ipsy bought BoxyCharm, all of a sudden we're seeing BoxyCharm flash sales that last for like 72 hours. I do prefer the BoxyCharm sales over the Ipsy sales still, even though the companies are merged or whatever. I didn't pick up a whole lot. There's three items in this box. I actually ordered five items, but they shipped them separately. So two other items will be coming at another time but I got three of them and one of them is a beautiful spring like palette and with all of the spring feels in the air I figured let's just unbox the couple products and then create a look with them as well because I was definitely needing some color in my life I wasn't feeling like I wanted some more spring vibes so um this is of course the look that we're going to create later in the video but first i'll just show these products and then we'll switch over to the try on portion so on the sale there was this cute little palette from artist couture i do have a couple of their highlights that i really like and they're not ones that i use all the time because they're super intense but they are really pretty they could even be used on the eye for like a really foiled um look on the lid but this is the ethereal blossom palette first of all let's take a second to appreciate that outer packaging that is beautiful it almost reminds me of like heaven's gates or something i don't know um and then the actual packaging is adorable i love it it's super sleek and thin so it's not bulky at all and then it has um these are the colors so and it's so funny because we just unboxed my boxy charm pr box for the month of april and it had the beauty ba beauty bakery sour you doing eyeshadow palette and i said in that video uh where we used the palette we unboxed it i said this is a really nice palette uh, but it's not my idea of spring revival. Like the whole theme to the box this month was spring revival. When I think spring revival, this is the type of color story that comes to mind for me. Um, so anyhow, we're going to use this palette, create this look together. But I just want to mention the way that this palette closes. It's got like a soft close, a soft magnet, magnetized closure. It just feels really nice. It feels super slick and I really, really just like the packaging on this. I'm going on and on about the packaging. Can you tell that I like it? <laughs> I do. 
And then next, um, I don't know what happened to the outer packaging of this, but we use it in the later part of the video. I have been loving products like this, whereas before they were not for me. Um, but this is the Milk Makeup Kush Fiber Brow Gel in the shade Dutch. So we'll check it out in the next part of the video. And then last but not least, I did get the Kors Plump Up Sleeping Facial um, Mask. It's supposed to smooth and fine, smooth lines and lift. And I love this brand right here on my desk. It's almost gone, I'll show you. This is one of the Kors items that I bought out of one of BoxyCharm's previously, previous sales. Um, but actually, so I think this was their last mega drop shop. So it wasn't like all that long ago and it is almost gone. Like, let me show you. I use it all the time. It smells so good and so fresh, but not overwhelming, but it does smell like pomegranate. I love fruity smells, but it's not something that smells so perfumey that I don't want to put it on my face. It almost smells like natural fruit. Like it's got a natural perfume type of smell in my opinion. And I really like it. And anyhow, this is their pomegranate pore blurring moisturizer. I'll be honest with you. I don't know how much that it actually blurs my pores, but it is a fabulous moisturizer for underneath makeup. Um, the way that it absorbs and doesn't leave any type of, um, feeling behind once it has sunken in. It just really makes it a fabulous moisturizer for underneath makeup in my opinion. I love it and I'm searching every sale for this exact one to get a uh, backup or a, a repurchase because I'm almost out. So this is something that I constantly use ever since I first tried it and I really, really like it. So anyhow, I have some other products from Kors as well and I really like them as a brand. I'm trying to like recreate call if there was anything from them that I tried that I didn't like and I just can't think of anything. Okay, so this packaging is very similar to the packaging on the other one, but this one is black. I want to say that it's like, okay, I think it's like black pine facial or something like that. Um, okay, so it looks like a little, oh, ooh, I'm going to drop that. Okay, it looks like this one's a little bit of a thicker formula. Ooh. <laughs> Damn it. It smells really nice. Again, nothing over the top, like to where it feels like you're putting, you know, rubbing perfume into your, so let's just try a little bit of it because I, I had it on my nose. Ooh, it smells good. And you want to know what? It almost reminds me of that. It just like disappears into the skin without leaving any type of greasy feeling behind. I really like this brand. You guys, if you haven't tried um, some of their skincare stuff, if you're a skincare person, definitely keep your eye out on the BoxyCharm and Ipsy sales. And if you see something from them, I would definitely recommend grabbing it, especially at that discounted price because I have not been disappointed. So those are the products that I got. And now let's jump into some springtime eyeshadow and checking out the formula on that palette. Hey babes. Okay, so since I am literally making this video while my toddlers are taking a nap, um, my husband is out of town all week this week and so is my mother-in-law. So I don't have my babies that are, I'm actually off of work from Saturday. I'm filming this on Sunday, but I was off yesterday and I'll be off through Thursday and my husband will be gone and I will be alone with the kids, which I wouldn't really consider that off work, but I won't be leaving the house for work. Um, but the kids are taking a nap and since I don't have anyone to watch them now, like while I want to come down and do a video with my husband being gone, I've got to try and do it when they're sleeping. So that being said, I might not have the longest time for this video. So I kind of want to just get into it. Um, I've got some very basic things started. Um, I did a little cocktail for my primer today. I used a mix between the Smashbox Mindful 5 Priming Serum. Um, I got this a while back. It was like $20 at my local Marshalls and I only used it once. I wanted to revisit it today and I do like it. I like products that are multitasking. Um, 
I like complexion makeup products that also have skincare benefits in them. So I wanted to give it a try, um, but it really doesn't do much in the way of filling in pores and fine lines. So what did I do with it? Where did I put it? I swear it was just right here. Hmm. Anyhow, I also used the um, no pore blum primer from touch and soul in like my porous and fine line areas and um that's kind of one of my lower end favorite pore and line filling primers i definitely have my high end favorites but when i'm really not going anywhere and i'm kind of just messing around um, I like to use my less expensive ones. And then I went in on top of that with just a little bit of the Laura Mercier Pure Canvas Illuminating Primer. I have tried this a handful of times and didn't care for it. I felt like it texturized my skin, but I have been loving the Rare Beauty Illuminating Primer. So I wanted to go in and try it in a different way and not use quite as much just for a glow. And I actually really liked the way that it turned out the way that I applied it today. And then on top of that, I've got the Dr. Jar Beauty Balm. I've got mine in light medium. This was another recent Marshalls score. And then I've got my eyes primed with the Gerard Cosmetics Clean Canvas Primer. I didn't set it today. If you have oily lids or you have oily skin, I definitely recommend setting it, but I don't have oily skin and I do like the way that not setting it intensifies the shadows. And because we have this colorful palette, I'm definitely thinking about playing with some colors today, which I don't typically do sometimes, but um, definitely more of like a neutral going eyeshadow girl, but I do play with color from time to time. Um, and then of course, while I had the Kors sleeping mask, we're not gonna try that, but we are going to try the um, Milk Makeup Kush Fiber Brow Gel in the shade Dutch. Okay, so again, here's a look at the palette. Um, it's really, really pretty. And it's so funny because this is the type of palette that I would have thought would have been in a BoxyCharm Spring Revival box, not so much the Beauty Bakery uh, palette, which did feel a little more fall themed to me. Like when I think a spring palette, this is kind of what comes to mind, kind of like color, Easter eggs. I don't know, maybe that's just the mom in me or maybe that's just me. But um, so we're gonna get into those two products and uh, see what we can come up with. Just a very laid back, you guys, I don't even have a bra on, I'm not leaving the house. <laughs> so just a very laid back, play with makeup type of thing for today. I'm kind of looking at the palette and trying to decide what I want to do. Um, I'm wearing a pink sweater, but do I really need to match it with the pink? Because I was kind of thinking those greens. Um, we're just gonna, we're just gonna do something. Let's just start with any old thing. So I think what I'll do to start the look is just kind of pop this color in to my transition area. And I'm very interested to check out the formula here because I do have some of their like really pretty highlights. Um, I can't think of the names of them, but they're like, uh, almost like multi-chromatic highlighters, uh, powdered highlighter. And I really like those. I don't use them all the time or anything, but I do like them, but I've never tried an eyeshadow. Okay. So that color is pretty much just what I thought it would be just kind of like a nice transition shade to kind of give some color and warm up the crease area after kind of whiting it out with the primer. And I like to do this and go in just a little bit above my natural crease because I do have deep set hooded eyes and doing that will just kind of, it, it's almost like creating a fake crease and it'll give the illusion of a lot more lid space basically when it's all said and done or at least it should if I did it right. <laughs> okay. Man, I'm like warm down here. It's heated up today in Michigan. It's a really nice, pretty sunny day. I don't know the temperature. It's probably like 60, but it feels like 75 to me because I'm in Michigan. Um, okay, so let's see where we want to go with this look today. 
Okay, so I think we're gonna check out this fuchsia color. I'm just going in with the same brush that I was using and I'm gonna kind of focus this on the outer part of the eye here and chuck the pigment out. It's got some decent pigment and I wanna see how it blends out and how the colors kind of layer on top of each other. That's got some decent pink pigment. I think I'm gonna go in one more time with that same color and just keep building and blending. That's actually really pretty. course we'll kind of clean up the edges after it's all said and done if you want to keep a crisp edge there you could always throw some tape on I don't bother with it because I can just clean it up when it's all said and done and it takes it just a second so I don't bother with the tape you definitely could though if it makes it easier for you okay so I'm happy with the way that built up nice deep pink shade I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start with this shimmer and I'm gonna use my finger to apply it. This is the purple. It definitely has a shift in it. Oh, I got like a piece of cat hair on me or something. Definitely has a shift to it. Very silvery, wet looking purple. And I'm gonna begin to tap this onto my lid. Going back in for more color. Okay, so that, I feel like in the pan, it looks like it's going to be darker, but when I pick it up on my finger, it pretty much looks the same on my eye that it does on my finger. So it's a little bit lighter than what I was thinking it would be, but that is okay. We're gonna work with it. Next, I'm gonna pink up, I'm gonna pink up, I'm gonna pick up the pink shimmer. That's what it looks like on the finger. And I'm just gonna kind of begin to tap it in on the inner part of the lid and just kind of blend it right into that purple. Again, I don't have a wet wipe with me. I'm wiping it on my clothes like a little kid. <laughs> Okay, what I'm doing right now is I'm taking a brush with no product on it and I'm just kind of cleaning up the shimmer, which basically just taking a brush with no product and kind of swiping along the line of where the shimmer was placed. Trying to decide how I feel about this. I definitely think the mattes are really nice. Um, when it comes to the shimmers, the shimmers are nice. They're good shimmers, but I like my shimmers all to be a little bit on the more on the foiled side, if that makes sense. These are just a typical shimmer. They're not very foiled, um, so it is what it is. <laughs> I just want to see this blue color. That's the blue color. I'm going to put a little pop in the center of the lid and just see what happens. Ooh, now the blue shimmer has got, has got a little something to it. 
and then just kind of patting that just on the center of the lid. And then I'm taking a finger that has no product on it and just kind of tapping out the edges of it to make it blend into the colors on each side of it. Okay, well that's something different. <laughs> yeah, that look is something different. I can't say it is my favorite, um, but it's something. Okay, so what I wanna do is I take that brush, again, that has no product, and just kind of blend the edge of that transition shade and the darker pink out. Just blending the edges out so that everything looks as seamless as possible. And then we're gonna, I don't really have a highlight shade in this, so let me see what I have nearby. So, Okay, so I have got a little Ofra highlighter right here. Um, this is the highlighter retrograde, retrograde. <laughs> it looks like that, it's really pretty. I'm gonna take a little bit of that and just pop it under the brow bone, taking the light shade in here. Just to kind of highlight the look on top. And then I also want to take a little bit of a smaller brush here and pop some on the inner corner as well. This is not the right brush for this, but it, let's see here. This is better for that. So I can kind of get in that inner corner. Just to kind of highlight, I really, I really like to like highlight and make that inner corner kind of like wet and dewy looking. I love looks like that. And then I think for fun, because why not? I'm gonna take a liner brush and I'm going to go in with that pink on the lower lash line. That deep meat, deep, I cannot talk today, that deep meat, <laughs> what? That deep matte pink. And I'm just going to brush it right on the lower lash line. I think I need some more. I feel like this look is, it's colorful, but it's kind of plain. So I really need that pop of pink on the underneath to like, you give it some, give it something. I don't know. I just feel like it's a little, it's definitely not my favorite. We'll put it that way, but we'll see how it all comes together with mascara, a little bit of liner and the new brow product. So let's do this. This is actually the, okay. So this is the Persona Cosmetics um, liner that I just got out of BoxyCharm this month. And it's actually really, really, really nice. It literally goes on like butter. And I'm just gonna line the top of my outer eye, my outer lid here. Just with a very thin line and I don't even bring it all the way in. I just really focus on the outer edge and then I'll smudge it with a liner brush. So it doesn't have to be perfect at all when you're going in with a liner brush to smudge it out anyways. And 
that liner is actually really, really, really nice. And not only does it go on like butter and it doesn't like pull at your, the skin on your eye, but if you want to use it for like this type of purpose to kind of just have like a smudged out liner look on the outer part of your eye, this is the best way um, for the shape of my eye to kind of do my eyeliner. It elongates it. Um, I don't have a line going all the way across my lid from inner corner to outer part because it takes up too much lid space when I have hooded eyes. So I want, whoa, I just poked myself in the eye. I want to be able to see the shadows that I just did, you know? Um, but it does help to elongate the eye on, I mean, as you can see, it totally changes the shape of the eye or at least the illusion. Okay, so we're gonna do some mascara. I would like to revisit this Item Beauty Lash lash snack mascara that also came out of boxycharm i tried it the other day and i felt like it made my lashes look a little spidery but i want to give it another try because i actually do like the concept of this small wand and how you're really able to like get in at the root and it lifts them amazingly and it definitely lengthens but i also felt like it made my lashes look a little spidery like maybe like whatever it is that stiffens the lash is almost just like a bit too much. I only went in with one coat the other day when I used it because they were looking spidery and I didn't want to like completely ruin the look. So I just did the one coat. But I wanted to revisit it and see if I liked it any better a second time. Like, I mean, it's okay. I really want to like it. I really do. Trying to work with it here. I mean, there's a... It, it's just not my favorite. It's okay. It's not bad. But I just feel like they're really not separated as much as I like. And, um, yeah, I just don't think it's my favorite. I'll probably play with it a couple more times. Um, because a lot of times I don't care for a mascara the first or maybe even second time I use it. But sometimes I end up really liking it later down the road. Sometimes I think it has to do with the formula drying out a little bit. So I'll just continue to play with it here and there. But as of right now, it's definitely not my favorite mascara in my collection, if I'm being honest. Okay, so let's try the Kush Brow Product. This is the Milk Makeup Kush, um, Kush Fiber Brow Gel in the shade Dutch. I used to never use brow products like this, so it's basically kind of like a tinted gel. But after I fell in love with the Anastasia duo here, do do hickey thing here. I have been loving trying new products like this. Now, I do think that this might be a touch dark for me. I don't know about looking at it. Um, but if it is, I can just run this through it and it will lighten it up. I have been, I literally use this in my brows every single day, but I have been really loving the simplicity of doing like this. It's like, it gives them color. It fills it in all in one. Um, these type of products and it also makes it look like you have more brow hairs than you actually do like it looks so realistic and this one is actually going on really really nicely I like the way that the product is gripping on to the hairs that I do have and I'm making them appear thicker so just kind of combing it through the length of my brow and kind of trying to fill them in and shape them with it all in one but you can always go in with a spoolie 
which I think I'll do because I've got some little bit of like clumpage going on, but it's not bad at all. So what I'll do is I'll just take, I've got a little empty Benefit Precisely My Brow here and I just kind of keep it for the spoolie because I like the spoolie on this one. Um, and just kind of make sure that the product is distributed evenly throughout the brow here. So I actually like that. It is definitely a touch dark for me, especially like if I had fresh blonde hair, my hair is a bit grown out. I need to get it redone. But the brow itself actually does not look bad. Let's see what happens Whoop. if I were to run a little bit of my Anastasia through it and just kind of lighten the color of it. Yeah, see to me that looks a lot better. It looks a lot more natural. And it doesn't even look like I have a brow over here. <laughs> yeah, I really, really like that. Okay, so what I'm gonna, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna catch the other eye up really quick and then um, we'll be back to talk about final thoughts and all of that. So I will be right back. Okay guys, so this is how it all came together. I definitely don't hate it. I do feel like I warmed up to it once I finished everything off and I see everything all put together at the end. So if you're curious, of course, um, for blush and highlight, I did have to go in with my new Natasha Denona Cupid cheek duo this came out of my boxy charm premium this month it is stunning it has a cream blush and a highlight and it is beautiful like i could definitely this is something that i could definitely see myself hitting pan on and trying to find another one on makari <laughs> um i love it I did decide to take the eyeliner from Persona that I already had on and just take my liner brush and continue to pull it out farther. Um, and I really like the way that that looks with this particular eyeshadow look. I feel like it just really did something to help elongate the eyes. I really like the way that it turned out. Um, uh, for lips, I went in with my Jeffree Star, the gloss. This one is in Crystal Kiss. It's a really pretty iridescent gloss. Um, I really like the formula on the Jeffree Star glosses. I think that they're beautiful and they really last um, for me quite well for a gloss. Um, and then I did some contour and bronzing with the Aesthetica Cream Contour Palette. Also came from a BoxyCharm. I got it, I tried it, I liked it when I tried it, and then I didn't really use it much after that. I felt like it did oxidize a little bit on my skin after a while, but I have nowhere to go today, and I do think that it's beautiful when it's initially placed. So I've been using it a little bit more lately, and I do like it. Um, it's okay. And then, of course, I used some concealer. I didn't really use it to, I brought foundation all the way underneath my eyes. So I really didn't need it to cover up anything, but I wanted to use it to brighten the under eye area and to help further lift the eye. So, um, you know, it's all in technique with that and the way it's placed and blended out. Uh, what else? Um... I think that might be it. <laughs> so when it comes to the palette, I do like it. I think that it's pretty. I think next time I'd really like to use the green colors together and see how that goes. Um, I will say this isn't like my absolute favorite eye look that I've ever done. It's really quite simple and I wish that the shimmers were a little bit more foiled, but it's still very pretty. Um, I feel like it's getting me in all of the feels for spring, especially with the warm weather today. And then I will say that the Milk Makeup Brow product, I really, really do like. Even up close in my magnified mirror, they look really good and natural looking. Um, it almost is like drawing little hairs on there. And what I like about these products, products that are this product and products like this is that it's like filling your brows in and... Um, and like setting them, filling them in, shaping them, 
uh, all in one. And I love the simplicity of that. And if it works, you know, well like this and the Anastasia one, I love that. So I have been really into these lately. And yeah, so I think that's going to be it for this video. Uh, let me know in the comments down below what you thought. And I will see you guys very, very soon in my next video. Bye.